Okay, looks like we're live. Welcome everyone. I'm so glad to have you here and uh, wonderful to join with you tonight on this uh, beautiful Sabbath day. Thanks to the uh, welcome and the good offices of the John A. Witso Foundation uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm John Welch and we will be joined in a moment by Kirk Magleby. Uh, we are respectively the chairman of the board of Book of Mormon Central and the uh, executive director of Book of Mormon Central. And we're going to be talking tonight about the use of technology and latest developments in how you can uh, use technology for better understanding church history and particularly the uh, Come Follow Me curriculum that's uh, going on right now. So. Thank you for uh, coming uh, from all different parts of the world. I, uh, I would like to also mention that I am one of the directors of uh, Book of Mormon, uh, of well, Book of Mormon Central, but also of the John A. Witso Foundation. And that uh, this is a part of a series that is sponsored by the John A. Witso Foundation. Uh, the next program will be in a month and will be hosted by Rick Turley with his guest, uh, uh, Steve Harper. And so uh, tonight we'll be uh, looking particularly at some of the newest developments uh, at Book of Mormon Central and other resources that are available online. Now, I believe that Kirk Magleby should be on at this point. And uh, so I'm, there we go. Great. Kirk, welcome. <laughs> kind of stalling for time there, but we got you on board. Uh, but Jacob Renneker, thanks very much. Uh, Jacob and I go back a long way. And I was just remembering that uh, it was five years ago that Jacob and I presented a uh, fireside at the Los Angeles Temple Visitor Center on the gospel in a technological age. I looked at that website and uh, PowerPoint and the talk that we presented five years ago, and I was astonished at how obsolete it all is already. Things are moving so rapidly, as you all are aware, in the world of technology, and nobody can help us understand this better than Kirk Magleby. Uh, Kirk has uh, had a long and distinguished career in high tech and uh, computer programming and web design, and he's the mastermind between behind all of the uh, things that we'll be showing you dealing with what we have on uh, Book of Mormon Central, Doctrine and Covenant Central, and a lot of other things at this point. So uh, uh, Jacob Renneker asked me to just mention briefly that uh, we will take about uh, 20 or 25 minutes here at the start to run through a presentation. You are welcome to be asking questions you just use the ask a question button at the bottom of your screen and you can ask a question and we will uh, try to answer some of those as we go along. But most of the time we will uh, and pick up those questions after we've gone through the general introduction. But Kirk, let's just begin by thinking for just a minute about why this is such a great time for people to study church history and the Doctrine and Covenants using technology. Uh, well. How have COVID you has suddenly made every one of us an expert in technology. Yeah, COVID is, at least we can thank them for that, all those COVID bugs. But it is true. Uh, people are now much more comfortable and familiar with all kinds of uh, software and classrooms, webs, uh, websites, church meetings. And uh, we couldn't have said that even a year ago. And so we're now in a new communication mode. And uh, why would we want to spend special time on the Doctrine and Covenants in this regard? Well, beside the fact that it's the Come Follow Me curriculum, I find a lot of answers to problems that the world is facing right now in the Doctrine and Covenants. Of course, we find them in the Book of Mormon. We find answers also in the Bible. But the Doctrine and Covenants was specifically revealed to our day. And, you know, we sometimes think that we live in a very divided world where 
Uh, there's lots of conflict and clashes of ideology and political parties. But as a historian, I realized that Joseph Smith's age was not much different than ours in that regard. Uh, his world was divided among established religions and new religions, northern states and southern states, uh, and lots of uh, uh, distinctions socially between established people and newcomers in America. So they also dealt with this kind of divided uh, life in geography, politics, just about every aspect of their life. And the gospel is the same for them as it is for us. And the Doctrine and Covenants, I think, holds a lot of good answers that we can gain by relating to what we read in the Doctrine and Covenants sections. So that's another reason that I think it's a good time to be studying history and, and using technology to uh, search the web and find out a lot of things that you just couldn't have found before. Kirk, anything well, else on that? There's two developments in technology that are just exciting. So if you think where we were five years ago, uh, mobile devices weren't nearly as important or as powerful as they are today. What we're seeing across the suite of uh, Bookworm and Central Digital Properties is in some cases up to 90% of all the people who are coming to our uh, various sites are doing so on a mobile device. And that's brand new. <clears throat> and then the other thing I think that's so significant is video has just taken over. We made the decision two years ago, but we were going to focus on video because that was going to be the lingua franca of the digital age going forward. And uh, it's it's uh, just uh, truly astonishing how powerful the video medium has become. Uh, absolutely. Kirk, why don't we uh, dive right into uh, a presentation that you prepared to walk people through the Book of Mormon Central website and how it connects with the Doctrine and Covenants Central website and others. Okay, here we go. What you're looking at is, uh, if you were to go to bookofmormoncentral.org, this is the home page, and we're gonna walk you down through this home page. <clears throat> the image at the top is uh, one of the winners of our annual Book of Mormon art contest. But notice where it says, come follow me. <clears throat> There's the icon of the savior. And if you were to click on come follow me, what you'd see is our resource guide. Come follow me, Doctor and Covenant 2021. And we publish every week a resource guide, which is an extensive visual index of material, not only uh, from Book Mormon Central and our various affiliates, but also from other people uh, that will enrich your study of the uh, Doctrine and Covenants. <clears throat> so we start, for instance, in the resource guide with uh, what we call reference works, one of which is Doctrine and Covenants Central, one of which is a series on the Doctrine and Covenants Central YouTube channel by Lynn Wilson called Hard Questions in Church History. This is a series that she put together at Stanford University when a lot of students were coming to the Institute there at Stanford with very, very hard questions about uh, what's going on here. There, 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 seems, there seems to be some uh, interesting uh, uh, questions uh, arising from church history. And uh, Jack, you're, you're very familiar with Lynn Wilson. You're good friends. Yeah, Lynn and I were the uh, co-founders of, of Book of Mormon Central. She has taught for many years at the uh, Stanford Institute uh, and uh, she also has a PhD in New Testament studies from Marquette University and a very dynamic and uh, articulate speaker. Her PhD dealt with the uh, uh, various views that different American religions had about the Holy Spirit. And one of her latest uh, posts and uh, videos here uh, talks about the distinctions between LDS doctrine regarding this, the Holy Spirit and what was going on historically and simultaneously with the uh, churches around Joseph Smith at that time. By the way, as you watch Lynn, uh, on her, uh, uh, when, when you go to her element there on the, uh, on the website, if you click on that, you can also find a, a handout that she has prepared with lots of historical data, chronologies, background information, 
sometimes those handouts are six and seven pages long. And so you, you get both the oral presentation and also the uh, documentation and footnotes behind what she's doing. So once again, technology makes this kind of thing immediately accessible to uh, people all over the world, which as you know, is a, a real boon for people everywhere. Then uh, another re reference uh, is uh, uh, Tony Sweat's series here on the Unfolding Restoration. He is an award-winning teacher at BYU. He's the, the assistant department chair of the Department of Church History and the Religious Education uh, Department. And uh, he's walking through 26 different series or episodes in a, a video series uh, on uh, how to think about the, the uh, restoration, about church history, about uh, uh, how, to, how to deal with primary source material, how to tell uh, the, the really uh, important uh, material from the less important. Anyway, he's a very engaging uh, speaker. We're thrilled to have him. When we say re reference works, we're saying these are not things that are tied into the 52-week curriculum of Come Follow Me, but these are things that will help people understand better what's going on in church history, one of which is a marvelous resource called the Joseph Smith Chronology, that yeah, Kurt, let me uh, you talk about that for just a second. Uh, yeah. There are actually two chronologies here, uh, and Book of Mormon Central and Doctrine and Covenant Central will often be providing you with links uh, to uh, other websites and sources that we'll talk a little bit more about. They'll help you find your way around in things that you would never otherwise discover. Uh, the Joseph Smith chronology is one of those things. In fact, when you go there, you'll find that there are two chronologies. One is a day-by-day -day chronology, very extensive, telling you exactly what happened and where Joseph was and what he was doing every day that we know and can identify. There's another chronology, which is Joseph Smith's legal chronology that I helped put together, but it's a uh, incredibly complicated chronology. And it's amazing to see these two chronologies simultaneous with each other to see what Joseph Smith is thinking about as he's revealing sacred doctrine and the next day finding himself in court uh, to have to defend uh, the, the saints and himself. He was in over 200 court proceedings in his lifetime and by the way, was never convicted of any except for one when he didn't show up for militia duty once in Ohio. He claimed a, uh, an exemption uh, because he was a minister. Uh, they said, you're not the right kind of minister and charged him $10. But that's all. He, he didn't get his way on some things like his request for habeas corpus, but he, he never actually lost a trial. But to see all of those things going on is pretty amazing. Okay, Jack, we're going to have to really run through here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we're, we're continuing on the resource guide that uh, Bookmore Central publishes every week for uh, that particular week's Come Follow Me curriculum. Notice there are six weeks here on this page. And if you look at the lower right-hand uh, corner, this is the resource guide for the week we're in right now. Uh, DNC 10 and 11, that most of us uh, studied today in uh, Sunday school. And if you were quick to click on that, here's what it looks like. And then we start taking you into the actual resources that we offer at Bookmore Central for helping uh, people study Come Follow Me. Uh, the most watched program right now in the church is uh, uh, Taylor Halverson and Tyler Griffin. Their video series, so we call Come Follow Me Insights, and there's the link to it over there on uh, uh, lower left. We then have Mariana Richardson and Stephanie Sorensen, two faculty members from BYU, experts on uh, various aspects of church history. And their episode or their uh, uh, series is called uh, Come Follow Me Act in Doctrine. Then uh, one of the very finest teachers in the church is Casey Griffiths. And he also has a weekly video series with us. And uh, we take you to the episode that's relevant to this particular week, February 1st through the 7th. Kirk, let me also say one of the questions that come up asks, uh, do we have resources that will help the less informed people or is all of this very uh, historically sophisticated and over people's heads? These videos are particularly aimed at uh, the general audience. They're very useful in families. Uh, 
we get good reports about them being used in seminary and institute as well. So it's uh, that, that's a good point. Uh, uh, the video medium has democratized knowledge about uh, church history to a large extent, made it very very accessible. What you're seeing now is uh, the Book of Mormon Central YouTube channel, and these are the most recent uh, videos uh, posted on that channel. We are now publishing on the Book of Mormon Central YouTube channel uh, a video a day. <laughs> And everyone, everything on here has to do with uh, Come Follow Me, including the know whys that we're publishing right now. <laughs> Maybe I could explain what a know why is. Uh, not too long ago, Elder Ballard was talking about knowledge and how it's important to ask questions. He said that the best question you can ask, and the one that will be most likely to lead to revelation, is the why question. It's not just enough to ask, well, what happened, but why did it happen, and why is it important? So we package this information in short, no wise, that give facts, historically well-developed, but then also ask, well, let's reflect on this a little. Why is this important to know? Why would you want to know this? Why does this help? And that's why we call it a no why. Uh, essentially, what you have here are some of the finest teachers in the church sharing their insights about that particular week's uh, Come Follow Me lesson. <laughs> Now, moving on, we're still looking at the resource guide, which, again, is a visual index into uh, interesting and uh, informative and uh, uh, devotional material about this week's Come Follow Me lesson. We take you to Come Follow Me, or, or I'm sorry, to Doctrine and Covenant Central uh, right here on uh, that uh, particular section. We have a series from Steve Harper on the context behind that section. And then Susan Easton Black gives us some of her insights of what's going on in that section, as well as biographies of all the key people that we'll get to in just a minute. And then here's a very interesting one. This is Scott Woodward's video about DNC Section 10. Jack. Yeah, Scott Woodward is uh, on the religion faculty up at BYU-Idaho, and he has uh, volunteered to be the, uh, uh, the point person for Doctrine and Covenant Central. You may be confused a little bit because we're talking about Book of Mormon Central and Doctrine and Covenant Central simultaneously. They are two different websites, uh, but they do overlap a great deal. And you'll be guided back and forth as you uh, play with and go through these uh, different lines of thinking and inquiry. So uh, feel free to you know go back and forth. The uh, border between the two is quite porous. Basically, if it's dealing with the Come Follow Me lesson that's immediately on your calendar, you'll find that in Book of Mormon Central and the Come Follow Me reading guide. We've done that for several years with Come Follow Me. And many people don't know that Doctrine and Covenant Central exists yet because we only started that on January 1st. So everything that you're seeing here on Doctrine and Covenant Central has been put on uh, very, very quickly, uh, but the uh, uh, that will continue to build, but Doctrine and Covenants Central will expand into more historical contexts and will we'll have things that don't directly relate to what you might want to use in the Come Follow Me lesson. But back to Scott Woodward's video here that you see in, in the bottom center, this is animation. Uh, this is very cleverly done. These are eight to 10 minute videos about every section in the Doctrine and Covenants. And families are finding this is marvelous because uh, young kids enjoy it and uh, kids of all ages uh, go uh, for this. It's very popular among families right now. Uh, this is what uh, the uh, Book of Mormon Central Resource Guide Visual Index looks like for enrichment material on DNC 11. And you'll notice uh, a series that we call Artifacts of Church History in the lower right-hand corner where we're actually talking about the original manuscript of DNC 11 that's now in private hands. Now, uh, what I'm showing you now is the YouTube channel for Doctrine and Covenants Central. Some, some, of, these YouTube, uh, some of these videos just went up uh, literally this, this, this morning at 6 a.m. through the automated process that YouTube has of staging videos. But uh, you'll see a series uh, down in the lower right-hand corner on the first vision. Then all of those ones with uh, the little green stylized angel Moroni, that, that happens to be the recumbent angel from the um, uh, Nauvoo Temple. And um, uh, then you'll see Lynn Wilson series, uh, uh, Tony Sweat series, 
And then there's some interesting stuff here that uh, the Joseph Smith Papers Project put out a few years ago. And there will be dozens of these videos here fairly soon coming on stream. There's only two of them up there right now, one from Steve Harper, one from Susan Easton Black. But a lot of the, of the terrific church historians uh, uh, were captured on video as part of the Joseph Smith Papers Project. And we've edited those videos, and uh, we'll be putting them up here uh, here in sequence on Doctrine and Covenant Central. Okay, moving on. Um, in the Book, Bookmore Central Resource Guide, we give you a daily reading plan if you, if you, uh, you care to follow along. Uh, this uh, essentially uh, says if you were to uh, read this week's reading material, here's what would pertain to Monday. It sort of divides it up in, into uh, manageable chunks and then gives you some other additional enrichment for that week. Then we go to the additional resources, which is a bibliography, and it goes on for page after page. We uh, talk about uh, material that, that uh, we published as well as other uh, sources. This is where we bring in uh, material from book, uh, BYU studies and so forth. And much of what you're seeing here is in our own archive. Now, why don't you explain, Jack, what our archive is? Uh, the, the digital archive that we've created basically focuses on the Book of Mormon so far. We have over 7,000 books and articles all in full text form in the archive. One of the reasons we want to do this is so that anytime we cite a source and we have access to that material, we want people to be able to read what we've written, find it in the footnote, and just a click will take you then into the archive to read that full article or chapter. As you can see, they're all highlighted here on this page. And, and this uh, is what the actual archive looks like, subsetted by Doctrine and Covenants. This is the scripture filter for DNC. Right, and you can see that there are 132 items that we've posted in the last month uh, drawn on our Doctrine and Covenants materials. If you go to the Book of Mormon filter, uh, that's where you'll get a lot more, but many of those deal, of course, with uh, early church history and the coming forth of the Book of Mormon. Okay, uh, as we go on uh, the Book of Mormon Central Resource Guide, we have an image bank for every week. We then have the church's official resources. If you were to click on what's called Doctrine and Covenants Historical Resources, that takes you right to the church's website, and this is their offering, which is magnificent. Uh, and then, continuing on, there are some other things that we do at uh, Book of Mormon Central. So the resource guide for next week, DNC 12 through 13, is there at the top. Our offering for those not of our faith is called Messages of Christ. And we actually have some videos on Messages of Christ that have gotten over 3 million views. And this is the way that we are trying to share with uh, uh, other uh, people of other religious persuasions a Latter-day Saint take on what's going on in the Bible. This is our most recent video, and it happens to be about the archaeology of uh, Peter's home in Capernaum, and we're uh, 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 particularly highlighting the episode where Peter uh, uh, comes in, and we have the healing of Peter's mother-in-law by the Savior. <clears throat> our most recent Know Why is uh, there uh, in, in the center, uh, uh, bottom center. Why was Joseph Smith accused of being a disorderly person? That's uh, coming out of uh, Jack's legal experience. And then uh, the uh, resource guide for the current week, the one that we've just uh, been going through, is there in uh, 10 through 11. This is what it, it uh, looks like as you follow down the Book of Mormon Central uh, main page. Here's how you subscribe to our weekly email list, for instance. And then this is interesting. This is what we call a broader ecosystem. We're trying to put together a group of digital properties which will enable people to uh, immerse themselves in the Word of God and make uh, the uh, Word of God accessible, comprehensible, and defensible. We're not going to have time to go through, especially for seminary or Evidence Central, but we do want to go in and show you a little bit of what's in Pro Great Price Central, then we'll move on to Doctrine and Covenant Central and Scripture Plus. This is what happens if you go to uh, look at uh, Doctrine and Covenant Central. This is what it looks like. The material down uh, uh, below, the brand new posts are all about the Book of Moses. We have some tremendous Abraham material out there, but we're going to focus on Joseph Smith history because that's what we're reading this year. We have uh, put up 20 insights, uh, uh, lovely illustrated, very extensively documented articles about the first vision, uh, basically. The, the, the Joseph Smith history portion that deals with the first vision. And that you'll find on Pearl Great Price Central. <clears throat> Moving on to Doctrine and Covenant Central, this is what the homepage looks like. And um, this now is the section 
page, there's a page for every section, and this is the resource page for section 11. One of the interesting things you'll notice there is the earliest manuscript at josephsmithpapers.org. And that's what that looks like uh, right there. It just takes you into, into the Joseph Smith Papers project. Uh, this happens to be the manuscript behind uh, section two, uh, but there's this interactivity back and forth. We've tried to, to uh, give you a direct one-click link into the relevant material that is useful for this particular section. Anything you want to say, Jack, about Joseph Smith Papers project or um, uh, Casey Griffith's burst level helps over here or anything else on uh, DNC? Well, the, uh, the Joseph Smith Papers project, of course, has been going on since, uh, uh, well, 2005 when we first got started with that. And what a marvelous resource. There's nothing really comparable to it in the world with the kind of, of access we now have to the original manuscripts of so many things in church history and particularly Joseph Smith's life. You know, I like to compare what we have as Latter-day Saints historically with what we have to deal with as biblical scholars. How much do we have of New Testament manuscripts, for example? How close can we get to, say, Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law in a manuscript? You know, it's, it's not very close, a couple hundred years before you actually start getting even fragments of New Testament manuscripts. A new religious movement that begins with such consciousness about a record shall be kept. And from day one, meticulously are saving and creating documents to help us know what is happening. And for you now to be able to get right into all of that material is otherwise completely unprecedented. So the, the church has done a marvelous job and I hope you all enjoy getting into that material and sometimes they will just give you the facts, only the facts, please. For example, in a biographical entry under the Joseph Smith papers, you'll get a whole string of, of dates and places where that person was during their life. Uh, we then have a biographical section that fleshes that out more. We will eventually have 135 biographies written by Susan Easton Black about the main people mentioned in the Doctrine and Covenants. So uh, both depend on each other. And what Kirk mentioned very briefly was the idea of an ecosystem. You know, human beings cannot exist, cannot flourish in any way, and certainly cannot uh, really sustain their lives without being connected with other people. And it's interesting that websites and social media bring a lot of things together that also have to have other organizations, other websites, other groups in order to really have all that needs to be offered. So having uh, this interaction between say Book of Mormon Central, Doctrine and Covenant Central, and then the church history websites and other things, BYU Studies, Religious Studies Center, and many other things provide together yeah. here at Doctrine and Covenant Central on each section's web page. And this yeah. kind of ecosystem way of navigating through all of this material didn't even exist a year ago. No. So if, you, if you're saying, why haven't I heard about this before? Well, now's a good time to uh, get in and check these things out and enjoy them. As, as we flesh out Doctrine and Covenant Central, it will become a go-to place to find a curated, easily linked entree into the vast corpus of material in the Joseph Smith Papers Project. But, uh, some other resources that we show you for DNC Section 11, here's the Google Maps uh, view of where it took place, Harmony, Pennsylvania, a little a brief image bank. These are the biographies written by Susan Easton Black of all the uh, personalities that are involved. And then something interesting, we actually take you on site and to begin to show you some resources about the places uh, they're involved in the Doctrine and Covenants. These are significant events that took place in the Palmyra, Manchester area. DNC sections received here. Notice down below, you've got the Sacred Grove, the Hill Cumora, the uh, various homes, the press, and so forth. Uh, each of those have a, a, a sub page. And now it gets really interesting. <clears throat> Book of Mormon Central has gone around and gathered 360 views of major church history sites. You're now looking at the Sacred Grove. 
And look in the upper right-hand corner up here. Notice where this is coming from. This is Google Street View, Google Maps. This is from the Scripture Plus subsidiary, a, a, a part of Book of Mormon Central. And we've gone in and posted 360s now of major church history sites all through Google Maps. This happens to be the, the Sacred Grove. Uh, if I was actually in Google Maps, I could move my cursor around and, 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 and be able to walk through and, and kind of take a tour through the, uh, the, the, the woods here. We get into the Hill Cumorah. Here's uh, some image uh, material about uh, the Sacred Hill. And here too, down below. here too, there's the 360 degree tour of the Hill Cumorah. And when you think about the opportunities that this gives to people all over the world and in all kinds of languages, we're, we're, uh, we do Book of Mormon Central both in Spanish and uh, starting in Portuguese and soon in other languages as well. But people now can have a virtual experience with all of the main historical sites in New York and soon in Ohio and elsewhere. And this is all because of uh, the technology and the advantages that we have being able to make this material available everywhere. We, we sing about millions shall know Brother Joseph again. Well, millions are going to be able to see themselves in these locations and see it as a living part of history. History is not just books and words, but understanding the context and the life and the circumstances and the sacrifices of people. And a lot of this uh, visual material, I think, unlike ever before, is really accessible uh, to everybody. Uh, members of the church are not old or young, and we're excited about you knowing about this, hoping that you'll find it helpful and we'll share it with your friends. Then, uh in the Doctrine and Covenants Central Resources section, a very interesting way to study the Doctrine and Covenants is by themes. And here's a Jack, uh, or here's a, uh, a book that Jack and Jeannie published a number of years ago. It's gone through several uh, editions since, but here it is for free. Uh, download it, ebook, ready to go. And uh, there are also some poetry there by uh, Sharon Anderson. <clears throat> and the themes book is just another way to read the Doctrine and Covenants. Uh, all of the words of the entire Doctrine and Covenants have been put into thematic units. So if you want to read everything about uh, the organization of the church, uh, offices of the church, you want to read everything about commentary on the scriptures or on the plan of salvation, they're all clustered properly so that you can just read thematically through. Now, yes, this takes this out of historical context, but you know, the Doctrine and Covenants is not a long book. Uh, you can put all of the words into about 200 pages. And yet who reads the Doctrine and Covenants cover to cover? Hardly anyone, because it's broken up like a scrapbook. So there are different ways to read the Doctrine and Covenants, this being one of them. And I would hope that uh, as you want to get your arms around the whole book as a book, reading it this way uh, might be a, a good way to do it. Now, there are other kinds of reading guides that uh, and reading plans that uh, Kirk's already mentioned. Uh, but let me say you can create your own reading guide with this book by saying, I want to read the whole Book of Mormon as fast as Joseph Smith translated it. And it didn't take him very long, as you know. Uh, and uh, so give yourself a couple months and see if you can do it. Uh, it's quite an experience to have that kind of immersion with the, the text. It's a different kind of reading, but it will then open up uh, insights and thoughts for you as you uh, come back to it and look at it historically. And again, everything that we've just shown you on Dr. and Covenant Center did not exist 30 days ago. This has all come about just very recently. We have about 250 pages of material on that site right now. Uh, Book of Mormon Central has been going since uh, January 1 of 2016. We have about 8,000 pages worth of material just to kind of give you a level set there. But everything we've shown you is also available now on our mobile app called Scripture Plus. We're excited about this. Uh, this has been out now for about a year and a half. We've had uh, uh, nearly 200,000 people download this, and it's revolutionizing the way many people study their scriptures. <laughs> and here's why. Because you can read the scriptures. This blue bar right here that follows you uh, down through, that's, that highlights the verse that's, that's currently active. We have to be looking at DNC 1121 right now. 
And then this section down below uh, is where the enrichment content uh, comes in. And there are four icons there. Uh, you'll notice the little right arrow, which is the video icon. If you were to click on that, it would show you the videos that, that uh, have something to say about DNC 1121. The image icon that's grayed out right now, that simply means there are no images that we've uh, linked yet to DNC 1121. But as soon as there are, uh, that uh, icon will light up. And then the light bulb takes you to textual material, commentaries, insights. The Doctrine and Covenants Minute right here is authored by Casey Griffiths, and it's a verse-by-verse -verse commentary of everything that's going on in the, the uh, DNC. Then uh, this uh, uh, little uh, notation uh, image right here uh, takes you to historical context. And then this is the easiest way to do Come Follow Me in 2021. It's to use the reading plan within the um, Scripture Plus mobile app. You'll actually look at a screen capture of the mobile app and what it looks like on the reading plan. Today is day 42 of the reading plan. And if you were to stay current with the reading plan, today you would read DNC 11, 15 through 30, it takes you through the end, end of the uh, section. And here's commentary down below <clears throat> that, that would help you understand what, what you're reading. But uh, this is a marvelous way uh, uh, to do Come Follow Me. And uh, you just go to uh, scriptureplus.org, download it, iOS, um, Android, Kindle, it's all for free. And there are there's vast resource going into to, uh, the curation material right now that's come, going up on Doctrine and Covenants. Uh, I'm sorry, on, on uh, Scripture Plus for the Doctrine and Covenants year. Then we have uh, uh, mentioned Kirk uh, before we leave Scripture Plus that it's absolutely free. You yeah, just go we're a nonprofit, and uh, we completely uh, agree that it should be without uh, money and without price. <clears throat> and okay, and some are Spanish as well as English? Uh, yeah, the Search Plus is currently available it's in both English and Spanish. I haven't got to Portuguese yet, but um, uh, it's quite a resource. <clears throat> uh, so some of our affiliates, uh, BYU Studies. Jack, you were the editor for 25 years of BYU Studies. That's just your baby. Yeah, the uh, uh, we do a lot of work. If you wonder where you can contact some of these organizations, we put an affiliates page at the bottom of the Book of Mormon Central homepage. And BYU Studies, of course, is one where you've had lots of material published on church history in all phases and decades of the church. Uh, BYU Studies started publishing in 1959. And uh, all of BYU Studies is available, as many of you know, uh, electronically, but what you don't know is that we are working on a Doctrine and Covenants index that will allow you to find everything and every time that the uh, Doctrine and Covenants has been mentioned in any article in BYU Studies, uh, which will uh, immensely help your history study as well. And as far as BYU Studies is concerned, one of the questions that's uh, been asked is, are there any insights about uh, the translation process, time when particular chapters were translated and so on. Uh, this issue of BYU Studies, it's uh, volume 57, number four, has a 50 page article in it on the timing of the translation of the Book of Mormon. And at the end, there's a little known six page chart that gives you a day by day estimation of where Joseph and Oliver were between April the 6th and June 30th in the translation process. And uh, we know that certain days were being used for other things beside translation, like moving from Harmony to Fayette. Uh, but you can then correlate some events. Uh, for example, uh, when the revelation is given about uh, the conversation that Jesus had with John the Apostle about whether he should stay or go. Uh, it's quite possible that that section in the Doctrine and Covenants came close to the time when they had just finished translating the material at the end of Third Nephi, uh, where the 12 disciples had a similar conversation uh, with Jesus. So there are some interesting connections that can be drawn between the translation and other historical events that are going on, including things like help from the Knight family in Colesville uh, and uh, 
the obtaining of the copyright for the Book of Mormon. We have the historical documents for that. Uh, that uh, in uh, June, the copyright was secured while they were in Fayette. And other things that tie in so that you can really pin down what happened in the translation. So uh, that's uh, the kind of thing you'll find at BYU Studies. Also, uh, the Religious Studies Center is on the uh, bottom of the screen here. Religious Studies Center has also been involved with lots of church history publications, and uh, we're affiliated with them, and they allow us to put all of their church history material into our archive. And so uh, that also facilitates your access to these materials. So, Kirk? Now, we're affiliated with Interpreter Foundation, um, Morgan Foundation is a very interesting group. Uh, they've been publishing now for about 10 years and have a vast reach. They, they, they uh, publish in about a dozen, actually, I think it's more like 15 languages. And uh, Book of Mormon Central is beginning to have a very, very close, uh, very productive relationship with Morgan. In English, they're not nearly as well known. But you go to Spanish, their mas fe dominates uh, in Spanish. In fact, they're bigger than the, than the official church in, in the Spanish and uh, Portuguese areas. Then uh, other interesting resources, and down at the bottom is the Johnny Winslow Foundation, Jack. Yeah, well, our host tonight and uh, that organization as well that uh, I'm on the board of, we're uh, grateful that we have good connections with them and other affiliated organizations. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. That one. So, uh, thank you, Kirk, for that whirlwind tour through a lot of stuff. And uh, let me just uh, pull up a question or two here. One person has asked, any chance of emails coming out daily like we did with uh, uh, Book of Mormon emails on Book of Mormon Central? Uh, well, uh, we don't have a separate email system for Doctrine and Covenants Central at this time. But you'll notice if you go on the Doctrine and Covenants uh, uh, website, there's a subscription. And it's just a regular Book of Mormon Central email. We only have one email. We send out uh, a comprehensive email once a week. If you want just one email a week that gives you everything for the week, sign up for the weekly. Or daily, we'll send you out an email a day. But uh, much of the content going out right now over the Book of Mormon Central email system is, in fact, DNC-related. Good. We've got a question asking if we plan to do virtual tours of church historical sites, more than just the 360 views. Uh, this, is a, this is a bright person that asked this question, Jack. Uh, and the answer is yes. We're not quite there yet. We're just barely getting our 360 um, uh, sort of act together, so to speak. But yes, we absolutely uh, uh, hope to be able to take you on 360 tours. And this is primarily for those that uh, are not in this country who don't have the resources to be able to just stop in the, the, the uh, family minivan and, and uh, drive out to Nauvoo. Uh, this is for the, the, the church is a worldwide phenomenon. We want people all over the world to be able to come and experience these marvelous places. We got another question here uh, asking, how do you technologically preach Christ and the restoration without reviling against revilers? How can we keep uh, uh, equanimity and kindness in what we do? And Boy, that is, that's a tough one. Um, that, that the you go on YouTube and open uh, up uh, comments, Anyone on the face of the planet can come in and say whatever they want. Now, as a moderator, I can go into YouTube and I can say, block this particular person, uh, eliminate this particular uh, comment. And we do. So just try to keep things uh, sort of sanitized. Uh, but uh, it's tough. We have policies at Book of Mormon Central because we have so many young uh, people working with us, interns, college kids, and so forth. And they sometimes get caught up in the moment in this, this sort of a debate mode and this, and this tit for tat. And, and they're going to go take on the antis and, and, and uh, try to uh, sort of drive the point home. It's kind of like uh, in, the, in the old days when we used to call it, talk about Bible bashing when we were out in the mission field. It was never very effective. And so the, the spirit of contention is not of me, uh, says the Savior in uh, 3 Nephi. And we try very hard to, to have policies that, that train these young people on how to be gentlemanly, how to be uh, kind, uh, how, how to be diplomatic. But frankly, if there's a hater, and there are plenty of haters out there, uh, we just simply ignore them. Yeah, we do, but we answer them indirectly, and we answer them impersonally. 
And we try to give people all the facts and help them understand why there are issues and why there have been problems. And many times the old problems in church history that people continually are agitated about have been resolved or at least mitigated by new information and details that on many occasions, people who are arguing one way or another are simply unaware of. So more knowledge is more likely to help to reduce the, uh, the controversy and lower the thermostat a little bit uh, on the heated conversations. And so far, I think we've been quite successful in doing that. It certainly is our objective. I never want to write something on paper, publish something in, in a book or an article, or say anything on the website that I wouldn't say to someone if they were personally there. Uh, the web has a sense of being impersonal. And, you know, if you can just walk away from the personalities and the human beings that are on the other side of a conversation, well, you're really not having a communication at all. So uh, we try to communicate in ways that uh, will be clear. Uh, people may disagree, but we hope we can disagree where uh, those disagreements will only help us to go further into what facts are available uh, to state them clearly, and uh, the way the spirit of the gospel and of Jesus Christ would, would have us do. And we do have some resources that we did not mention in our uh, tour, Jack, that are very much uh, centered on user interaction. And those are our Facebook groups. We have a Facebook group in English. It's called Teach, Learn, Share. Come follow me. We have a Facebook uh, group in uh, Spanish uh, called uh, Central de Libre de Mamon. We have a Facebook group, group in uh, Portuguese that's just called uh, Membros da Igreja de Jesus Cristo. We have over 200,000 members of these three Facebook groups, and there's some marvelous conversations that take place. Now, they're all moderated, so if somebody goes in there and tries uh, to, to uh, uh, sell something, we shut that down. If they go in there and if they're trying to get off topic, we'll shut that down. But as long as people are actually engaged in uh, teaching each other and sharing what about uh, the experience they're having, uh, it's a place to post user-generated content. And uh, uh, we're very, very pleased with the results of, of those three Facebook groups right now. Uh, Kirk, uh, we've got a question asking if uh, the images on our website can be used without license or fee. Well, uh, that's a complicated issue. Indeed. <laughs> uh, we attribute most of the images that we show. We use some images uh, uh, through the doctrine of fair use that's uh, uh, be beginning to be more expansively interpreted as the, the digital age rolls out and as the, the uh, uh, paper uh, printing press kind of fades into obsolescence. Um, the images that we have in the archive, okay, if you'll go to archive.bookofmarkcenter.org uh, archive or just go to bookofmarkcenter.org and then just follow down and click on the archive link. Um, anything that's in the archive, you're free to use. You're welcome to use. Hmm. If it's explicitly stated that it came from Creative Commons, uh, you're, you're fine. You can use something from Creative Commons because that, that's free for non-commercial use. Now, I, I should make that distinction. If you want to take an image and then sell it, even if, even for a for, uh, uh, say a dollar ninety nine uh, ebook, uh, kind of a of, of a, a cheap publication. Then the answer is no. It, there's a very different process you have to go through to take an image and put it in a book and sell it than there is for uh, the sort of thing we're doing, which is simply publishing things for free and uh, uh, doing it in, in a digital format. So in general, the imagery that you see on uh, Book Mormon Central has gone through some sort of a curatorial process where we are respecting intellectual property rights and where we're trying to uh, limit ourselves to things that we really do have uh, a, a legal right uh, to. Therefore, most of the imagery that you're gonna see on, on Book Mover Central would be okay for you to use for incidental, non-commercial, uh, private use. But just don't go try to put in a book and sell it because uh, you could. Uh, th there are things that are on our site which we've used through the Fair Use Doctrine 
which are not available for you to go then use in a commercial environment. Excellent. Um, very quickly, we're running out of time, but uh, uh, yes, we are now planning a uh, Bible central. We've decided not to have a separate New Testament and Old Testament central, but one dealing with both because they're so closely interrelated. Uh, someone wants to know about why the Doctrine and Covenants is not published in chronological order. Of course, you could ask the same question about the Bible. Uh, biblical materials don't have a chronology either, but uh, you can, if you're interested, of course, uh, just find the dates of when each uh, section. Well, it's easier than that, Jack. You go to Dr. Easily done on, uh, on Dr. Covenant Central. We've got a the uh, overview, and then there, 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 there's the entire book in chronological order right there. You can read the whole thing in chronological order right there. On you, you can arrange it that way. So, yeah. Uh, but it's the preface that kind of uh, threw us for a loop there. It is primarily chronological, except for DNC one, and it was the Lord Himself who revealed that preface. So we're not we're not going to uh, uh, go back and, and try to change His preferred order. Uh, that's correct. The uh, uh, I think we should end with a couple questions now that uh, and you know we do not know by the way when the harmony. Uh, uh, historic sites will be opened again, but you can call the church and they'll let you know. But the more important questions here at the end are, uh, how has this work influenced uh, the lives of people who work at Book of Mormon Central, our testimonies? Have we had experiences with people who uh, have found it to be uh, faith-promoting, uh, helping them over difficult parts in their life? And the answer is absolutely yes. Almost every day we receive uh, uh, emails and letters and expressions of thanks from people who have been strengthened by what we've been doing. And that, of course, is very gratifying to all of us. Uh, so many things bear testimony of the truthfulness of the, of the gospel. The word truth can, can mean a lot of things. And it's hard to find a true meaning of the word true that you won't find applicable to the gospel and the scriptures. And as we look at the scriptures from so many different angles and work together with, with other organizations, including the church, as you've, you've seen, uh, we feel very privileged and blessed and, and obligated then to share. If you have been warned, you have a duty to warn your brother. And we've been called to try to preach the gospel to all the world without borders and boundaries. Technology makes it possible for us to do this. Having so much information at our fingertips also creates, a, in a way, a need for greater humility. Because as T.S. Eliot once said 100 years ago, all the information that's available to people makes them think because they know a little bit about something, uh, they are now suddenly an expert on the subject. And I think as we have worked with church history and all of these materials in depth, we have come to appreciate the fact that we must be humble, and if we are, the Lord will give us answers to our prayers and lead us by the hand. So many things that have happened to make Book of Mormon Central, Doctrine and Covenant Central, and all of these other organizations feasible has been like so much else. The invention of technology, the prophets have told us, is here primarily to help us proclaim the gospel and to do it in a way that people will be able to personally receive. And of course, it's not in the technology that testimonies are found, but in the word and the word of the gospel and pondering and praying about what you get. And yes, we have testimonies and are happy to share them on every occasion and in every way we can that the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ is a reality. It is true. It is beautiful. It is complicated. It is 
individual, it is universal. It is a reflection of the Savior Jesus Christ himself. That's my testimony, and I share it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, representing the 40 some odd people uh, that are spending a great deal of their uh, time each day at Book of Mormon Central, and some are great volunteers. Uh, I noticed we've had Wally and Judy Breitenstein uh, on today, Jack, wonderful volunteers. Carol Jones, awesome volunteer. Thank you so much for your help. And on behalf of all the people that uh, are, are with us in this uh, journey of Bookworm Central, this church is true. <laughs> Joseph Smith is a prophet. Uh, the scriptures are the word of God. And uh, the scriptures are relevant in our world today as much as they have been at any other uh, stage uh, in, the, in the history of this uh, 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 world. And we are privileged to be able to spend a large percentage of our waking hours working on this kind of material. It is a thrill. And um, we have seen a number of people join the church as a result of our efforts. We've seen hundreds of people who've uh, come back and said, I'm going back to church now. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rekindle this fire. I've, I've got to, I, I've, I've got to get this in my life. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there is a very real impact and it's very personal. And uh, I share my testimony as well. This is true, and it's beautiful, and I love it, and it has made sense to me in my life, and it's provided for a better quality of life than I otherwise would have had. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Okay, uh, we want to uh, once again mention that in two weeks we will be having a Johnny Whitsell Foundation uh, evening with Robert Reese and his wife Gloria. They've created a humanitarian children's foundation and will be reporting on their recent trip to Madagascar. Uh, these kind of activities are all charitably supported. The Reese's Foundation, all is supported by charitable private donations. Likewise, Book of Mormon Central and so many other organizations. We are entirely funded by donations and someone's asked the question, is, is that so? And indeed it is. Even when we get royalties for what we, uh, for books that may have been published, those are royalties that are given to us uh, uh, by authors who would like to assign those royalties to us rather than collect the money themselves. So we're not even involved in commercial book sales in that way either. So uh, uh, thank you all. I think our time is, uh, is up. Uh, Jacob. So thanks again to Jacob Renneker for his production skills in helping us to make this happen. This is the first time we've done this and we've learned a lot in the process. And so thank you for your patience and for uh, being here. And if you ever have any questions, you can email us at Book of Mormon Central. We'll be happy to answer them. You also can uh, leave feedback on the Scripture Plus app if you go to the help menu on the app. And uh, even if you find just a typo or something that you think would be uh, uh, something we'd like to hear about, let us know. We love your response and your crowdsourcing help uh, as we have for tonight. So thank you very, very much. And we pray for blessings for all of you and hope to see you again. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>